Yeah, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second day of NEOSCON 2022. Yeah, and welcome on the studio stage. The first talk will be about Redux and React. I guess pretty much a lot of people use this in their daily businesses. Yeah, yeah for me especially, it's my bread and butter. But I use it basically every day do of the week, and uh, I really enjoy the developer experience because React combined with uh, TypeScript, that's really a whole whole new world if you're used to normal JavaScript. And yeah, yeah, and I know I see a lot of fa oh, some faces in the audience that think similar, I guess. Okay, so welcome on stage, Devlin Dudulao, yeah. and the stage is yours. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, uh, again, uh, good morning, and uh, uh, just a quick uh, uh, thing about me. Again, Devlin Duldulao, I'm uh, orig originally from Manila, Philippines, now working and living in Oslo, Norway for three years now, doing a lot of, of uh, enterprise uh, web application and uh, mobile and backend. So um, I would assume React user. Uh, with a little bit of experience in, in Redux or haven't tried it. So that's good. Okay, yeah, a few. So um, yeah, this talk is about Redux, uh, all about store, how do you set it up, uh, maybe if you have time, uh, how to set up tests also, uh, how to persist the, the global state in local storage and and the uh, new feature, actually it's not new feature, it's additional feature in uh, Redux Toolkit, which is uh, the RTK or Query API. If you're familiar with the React Query or Apollo client in, you know, when consuming GraphQL, you'll, uh, you'll you know, understand uh, how it works because it's related to caching. Uh, yeah, this is all about Redux, Redux Toolkit actually, because Redux is, Another library, which is an old Redux Toolkit, is the new. So, uh, without er uh, further ado, so libraries, let's check out libraries that we will be needing here. So, uh, yeah, you can add Redux to any type. This is the, the first thing. Uh, any type of application you, uh, you're using, uh, it could be um, React, uh, Angular, Vue.js, Vanilla JavaScript. It's a JavaScript library for managing states in an application. Another one thing is the React binding. So you can see uh, React dash something, the Redux. So it allows us to integrate uh, Redux in our React application. And it makes it very easy for us to go and get states right that we are storing inside Redux. Uh, what else? The Redux toolkit, this is the official opinionated batteries included tool set for efficient uh, Redux development. Right? It includes that uh, the query feature that I mentioned, also the Tunk. You know, before you install Tunk when you're just using the plain Redux before, but Redux Toolkit is another library we, you know, we'll uh, push later. So uh, we'll get back to this later, Redux Toolkit. What else? Uh, the Redux uh, Dev Tools. We'll see why uh, state management why Redux is different from just using the, the built-in you know, store management in React, because that's, that's not actually state management. Because state management uh, will give you this, uh, 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 these dev tools to you know, play or replay what's happening in your application, right? State management. So uh, yeah, uh, we need to know what does Redux solve in React. Uh, the props drilling, so this is a, a, a typical uh, problem in SPA, in single page application. If you have nested uh, uh, components, right, and your customer or the, the product owner or you know, the, the owner of the, the application um, asks you to what? Oh, I want this part of this, this uh, part of the profile of the user to appear here, and when you change something here, it should also reflect here, right? So that's the, the problem here that we're, we're uh, uh, fixing. Uh, it's not simple. You know, when two different uh, components in 
in very uh, uh, deep uh, in a deep level of your application needs to you know talk to each other or um, if you need the values that you're changing will reflect in that another component otherwise you'll be passing props passing events passing passing and it's going to be spaghetti if you don't have this store so store basically you can reach to this uh, global state in any component that's the beauty of it in any component you can just get the state and it's reactive so meaning the changes will appear in any component where you're using it so yeah what store uh, contains the app state let's make it uh, faster uh, one store per app by the way uh, each store can have many reducers or slices also known as slices of state so a quick flow of, of uh, redux so not sure if I can use my mouse. Can you use? Okay, can you see my mouse? So uh, the the first thing that's gonna happen in, in in the setup of Redux. So you have this store, right? And in any JavaScript framework on and state management, you always need initial value. So remember that even in Vue.js, there there are two uh, popular uh, state management library in Vue.js. In Angular four or five in, in in react you have this uh, sustand you have this uh, uh mobex you have this uh redux right all of them have this uh common uh, thing that they're doing you need to put some values initial value could be an empty string as long as there's an in initial value or an empty array right and then to to show that value from the store you need a selector so you have to remember this selector. Selector is to, to, to render that value in the component. So you need that. So after uh, rendering the, select the values here through selector, of course, you need to edit it, right? You need to, uh, to, um, to change the, the array, add something, right? It doesn't matter whether you need an HTTP request or, or without HTTP, re uh, HTTP request. So in that case, you need a dispatcher, so you need to, rem to remember dispatcher. But dispatcher is a function that, uh, it's, it's like, imagine it's a, it's a messenger. So it tells the reducer, or it tells the store what's going to happen, what, which, uh, which part of your store will, will have to be updated or deleted or will be added something. So it, it, uh, it sends the, the message to the store uh, what to, to, uh, to change. However, in dispatching action, there are two things in, in, in action. An action with side effects, meaning that's why it's side effects, meaning uh, uh, you're not sure what's going to happen. If you're sending something in the, in the server, right? It could be 200, OK, or it could be a 401, or it could be a 503. That's why it's called side effects, because you're not sure if your request to the server is going to go through. So it's, there's a side effect. So that's an action with side effect, and an action with without side effect. It's easier if there's a, if the action you know doesn't require HTTP request because it goes directly to the reducer, and the reducer will just remove, update, add your data or your your uh, data in the global state. However, if there's side effect, you need to check first if it's uh, it, it throws an error if it's 500 or 200. If it's 200. Okay, do what you want to do. If it's 500, of course, uh, the reducer will not uh, do it. So this is the typical flow. Uh, and this is also uh, applicable in, in Angular, by the way. If you'll be using Angular one day, it has Redux. So this is the, the flow. You have this uh, selector that you know extract the data from the store. You have this dispatcher right, to send the action and side effects, and then reducer. So. Uh, let's go to uh, Redux Toolkit. So, in 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 Redux in Redux Toolkit, uh, let's go to Redux first. Uh, best practices: uh, do not mutate uh, the state. You know, uh, the first and most important one is that we are not allowed to mutate state in our uh, store. We have to create new states and replace it existing state with that state. Uh, you'll often see the, that spread operator in, in JavaScript, in modern JavaScript, right? The spread operator, because it will create a new memory in your application, 
right? And or a new reference, by the way. So uh, the the way it's like in in React, the the diffing. So when you use use state, it kicks in the the diffing of the React to to know that okay, there's something that I have to re-render. That's why also in in Redux you have to use this spread operator because it creates a new memory in the application that will trigger the reconciliation in React to create this reactivity. Uh, reducers must not have side effects. You don't send HTTP requests inside the reducer. It's the HTTP request is in, in the outside. right? Do not have uh, non-serializable uh, values in state or actions. You, know, you, you don't write uh, classes there. Okay. So uh, yeah, wa only one store per app. So Redux Toolkit, let's go here, simplifies Redux code. There's maybe 20% boilerplate that has been removed if you'll be using Redux Toolkit versus the old Redux in React. Uh, opinionated, right? It's very opinionated. Actually, Redux itself is already opinionated. This is uh, more opinionated, but it removes those uh, boilerplate. Uh, good defaults for st store setup. You have these guidelines because it's opinionated. Easily to see, easy to set up, and most commonly use Redux add-on uh, uh, add-ons uh, built in. Like I said, with uh, Tonk already in some some things. Um, and there's another one to uh, to normalize data. It also has this built in to normalize data. If you're fetching this uh, nested nested objects with nested uh, array and you want to normalize it, Redux uh, Toolkit has it. Uh, this uh, normalizer. Less boilerplate. Okay, uh, how to use it? Just run npm uh, install Redux, React Redux, the b the binding, and Redux Toolkit, right? Um, okay, before the the demo, okay, again things to know: uh, actions, uh, okay, payload for uh, for of information for your reducer. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, the dispatch. So you have this uh, dispatch that you create, this hook, and dispatch, and then you have this action. It's very quick here. What else should we do? This is the old reducer, by the way. I'm just showing you the old reducer here. And again, the initial state, which is applicable in any JavaScript framework. This is very basic. You, all, you, you always need the initial state. And the old uh, reducer, which is a big switch, L, uh, switch case. This is the old Redux. Redux toolkit, you'll not be using um, switch, the big switch uh, case. You'll be using reducers. And then you have this state and action. Which, And uh, one thing that's already also built in into this uh, RTK is the emer. So I mentioned earlier you you use dot 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 spread operator right to create a new in new uh, new um, memory in your application. Where in this case you can mutate. <laughs> Best practice: do not mutate your data. But in Redux Toolkit, since you're using Emer under the hood, which is the, also the 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 author of Emer, by the way, it's also the author of of Mobex, which is another state management in, in, uh, in uh, React, by the way. Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're basically, you can mutate here your data. Just you don't have to spread the operator or something like that. Um, yeah, so this is uh, changing your state in uh, non-async or synchronous without side effects. What about with side effects? Extra learning here, extra reducers. This is for your actions with side effects, meaning uh, actions that uh, um, uh, actions that you use when sending HTTP requests to the server, right? So yeah, store aka single source of truth. What else? Uh, configure store. So this is the setup in your in your store. Um, Combining all the reducers or slices, and basically that's it after creating this. So, if for example, you only have one reducer here. Later, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. So, yeah, look at here, it's just Redux Toolkit, lesser boilerplate. And then, of course, in React, there's thing this uh, provider that 
you know, will trickle down uh, the data from the provider, giving it uh, access to all components in your application. And it looks like something like this. You have the provider and then passing the store that you created earlier, which is this one, right? And then that's the setup. Uh, then after that, the you selector, right, to, to render your data. So you selector, the name of your reducer. There's a way to give you uh, IntelliSense, by the way, through TypeScript. There's an extra setup, but of course, uh, 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 that's an you know investment of time because TypeScript will give you IntelliSense and in, you know uh, static typing. So you selector, curly braces, heroes, and then you can just render it. So this is the selector I'm, I was referring earlier. So uh, yeah, de demo. I think it's here. So I have this uh, server running already uh, through JSON server. And let's see here. So Redux Toolkit, right? Uh, this is the, the RTK later. So for the heroes, this is the RTK later. I will show you uh, the RTK query for caching. So after uh, after these heroes, there's another one, VLANs page. Well, anyway, uh, let let me show you how to set it up. Where's my mouse? So first things first, when you're setting up uh, Redux after installing the the libraries, right? So you have these features, which is uh, part of the naming convention where you put your your uh, um, slice types or actions, so features. So for example, here, heroes. And if you're using TypeScript, or even if you're not using TypeScript, so we have this, uh, let's go here first, heroes state type. This is what's what we're going to use in in the uh, reducer, in especially in initial state. So we're adding typings here, by the way. So you can use interface or type in using TypeScript. So this is for the state type. Another one would be at another type or another interface you can use for the hero. So ID, first name, last name. Um, yeah, uh, namespace, it's better to uh, do it here so you have one place where you can edit it, right? Not just typing it, you know, and make this, uh, and have this uh, typo error, so it's better to have this. Action types, you would need this if you're dealing with um, uh, side effects. Uh, why do we need this? This will be registered in your Redux toolkit. You don't need this, but it's it's good to have this so that later. And where's the? It's already here. Let's say the Redux Dev tool. Mm -hmm. And it's not appearing. Yeah, I was just testing this. Oh, anyway. Oops. No, that's okay. Wonder why it's not appearing now. I was just testing this five minutes ago. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go back here. And yeah, after typing this, uh, af after adding these types. You can now go to slice, right? Um, yeah, initial state. So you can see here just an empty object, empty array. Even the loading has uh, uh, initial value, which is false. Um, and for the slice, so you would need this create slice from the Redux toolkit. And adding the namespace, we created it so that we don't have to type this to do this, right? You can just use it here. Initial state, uh, again, 
you don't have to do this, but it's it's good to put it in a separate uh, location. You can just copy this and put it here. I don't, but you know, it's uh, gonna be uh, uh, untidy. Just uh, here's everything now. Or uh, yeah, mut mutation synchronous. We have this trigger loading. Remove hero from store. Uh, save hero list. So let's try this. Uh, trigger loading, right? How do we trigger that? Yep, you have loading. When you go here, to the pages, what's this dispatch? We have this get heroes action. Uh, okay, dispatch, the dispatcher, get heroes action. This is defined in, let me show it to you, here in hero action, because we're sending requests to a server, we need, we need data, right? We need data, but this data are coming from an API. Uh, that's why uh, we have to, to use this heroes sync, async actions. Uh, this is part of, you know, uh, will be part of the Redux toolkit for the side effects. And the way to set it up, this is another le uh, learning curve in, in Redux toolkit. You need to cr use this create async tank, hero actions, the uh, key value pair, async, HTTP calls, right? But if you're new to Redux and you don't want to learn ex le to do this extra learning, this uh, create async tanks, like what is this? Although you have these actions, your HTTP client, you can basically just do this, uh, fetch. And then after fetch, this is the built-in in, in the browser fetch. Then the response, using the response, dispatching it, save here release data for the action to save the uh, to save the the data coming from the API. Although this is not recommended, but again you can you can uh, do this to just remove or if you don't want to do that extra learning of this side effects in, in Redux, you, you can basically use the fetch or Axios, your HTTP client, get the, the response from the, the API, dispatch the, the data, of course, you need this dispatch, and save here release, which is the action to save the, the data from the, from the store. Uh, yeah, but again, this is not the best practice, but still, uh, just to remove that extra learning for, for the Redux. The, the idea in Redux, what they're recommending is, since these are what? These are business logic, right? This business logic should be located in the slice. So that's what they are recommending here. Adding the, the business logic in this reducer. So it's up to you. It's up to you. Do the business logic in the component level or do the business logic inside the extra reducers? Although, again, this is another learning, right? So uh, let's go back to slice, action. Save hero list. That is uh, what you're seeing in the heroes page. Save hero list to get the data. So. This is the data from the web API it's a, in JSON. So save hero list, as you can see. You can go here, save hero list, state. State is uh, an object where you uh, uh, put all your, your state, all your data. So actually, this is it to have the access here. So, here we're updating the heroes from empty array to uh, data with superheroes. So we need this. We need this to, to be updated. That's why here state that heroes action payload. What is this payload? This payload is is this one. 
from the web API. That is the payload. That's why we're, we're uh, mutating it here. Dispatch, save hero list, the payload, and when you go back, this is it. This is the JSON response. Right? So, uh, yeah. Remove hero from store. What are we doing here? We are removing one hero from store. You can use splice or here one liner filter. Uh, payload again. What is this payload? When you go here, heroes page. Handle delete hero. No, it could be here. The ID of the hero. So dispatch remove hero from store. That will remove the hero with this ID. So filter just give me everything except that you know that uh, hero with that ID. So that's how you mutate it. Anyways, uh, okay. So you already have this. Some some actions. These are the actions, by the way. You already have this. So uh, my tip uh, for you is just write this one by one. Don't don't try to to write a lot of actions in in you know in uh, one sitting or in in without testing your your Redux. What I mean by testing is you have this save hero list. Try to see if if it's uh, working. You know, uh, start building your store or uh, set setting it up. So you need this configure store from Redux Toolkit again. Name it Redux Store. Uh, preload state. This is uh, something that you might use if you're planning to uh, save the global state in the local storage, right? It's coming from. Redux local storage because uh, it, it's common also to to uh, uh, to be asked, hey uh, developer, please uh, you know let the user still have the data when they refresh the page because the the, the QA will start complaining, hey when I refresh the, the the browser all the data is gone. So that's a typical scenario of you know what you'll get from. From a, a QA, from 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 a tester, when they reload the browser, all the data from the global state uh, disappears. So, in order to persist that, you know, if you're planning to 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 have this user experience where they refresh the browser, the global state is still there, is through this Redux local storage, uh, simple. And there's another one actually, uh, Redux persist, but I found this very simple to use. So yeah, that's uh, a scenario of you know in in real world, uh, the QA will <laughs> try to to break the application and will complain, the data is lost. Why why you know why not uh, persist it? So this is how you persist the the global state in the browser. Uh, okay, reducer, you need this object. And what do you put here? Uh, your Hero slice reducer coming from actually here, all the way here. After writing the reducer, you need to uh, expose this. Uh, by the way, this is how you expose the the action, so you can use it in the component, right? The old way of of uh, reducer. The old, so you can see that there's a big difference. And then uh, to use this, to import this, I think it's already imported, exported, pala, sorry, exported, um, exported, no, no, it's not, where is it? Yeah, here, export, export. So it's already export, exported, and then you can, you can import it in the store. So if you have another uh, reducer, let's say VLANs or or uh, super VLANs or other other slice, just register it here, like so. Oops. 
Something like that. And the rest will be here. All the reducer. So once you set it up, so this is just the, the one-time setup and then you're done. Uh, yeah, if you found this uh, too much to, to learn, don't worry. Once you set this up, it's already okay. The, 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 the future uh, slices or reducers will be just added here one by one. And then, yeah, it's just one time setup and then you're done. So don't be afraid of learning this story. It's just how many lines of code? It's just if you're using TypeScript, you will still need this for, for typings until here. But plain JavaScript, 20 lines of codes only. So this is only for, for by the way, for TypeScript users. Uh, root state, so you have this intelligence of what you're adding here, by the way. So how do you access this uh, reducer, your global state? If you're using TypeScript, you need that intelligence, right? Let me show it to you. So you see the that the the typings that we're creating here. So you'll get this. Yeah, because of that setup. Just one time setup on also for, for TypeScript. And if you have ten or dozens of reducers, everything will be here when you dot. Use app dispatch, use app selector. And by the way, these are not something that I uh, made up. They're all in the documentation, by the way, of the Redux toolkit. These are the documentation also already good. Uh, all boilerplate and samples. Even how to uh, configure your Redux with the uh, Jess test, test utils here. This is not something, don't be afraid, this is not something that I just wrote by myself. I just copied paste this from the uh, documentation. And what, what is this? This is how, you're, uh, how you set up Redux with Jess so you can write unit tests or integration tests or component testing in your React application if, if ever your, your management asks you to write tests or your tech lead or your lead developer asks you to, uh, to write tests in, in React with Redux. Uh, this is how you would do it. And again, it came from the documentation. I just copied it and pasted it there, here, and then it started working. Uh, basically, you're doing everything, your, what your, uh, your components. Let's go to the app, the TSX. It's just the, the same. That's the idea, right? Provider, CSS baseline for this is material UI. Browser router from React Router DOM. Navigation bar, container, lazy routes, doing some lazy routes. So you just need to be able to do this in your setup of tests so you can write tests. Um, maybe we can run some tests here. Hopefully it will reverse it here. How many tests we have? And it's passing, right? You cannot see. So sample test. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is a React uh, testing library. So, uh, yeah, let me show you to you what is a React query. So we're almost done here with the heroes. Now let's go to RTK query. But before that. Let me show you the difference between RTK query and the Redux. Let's go to master. Oh no. Discard changes. Because I edited something. So you will see the, the difference of caching. And it's gone. So, uh, Redux Toolkit, Redux Toolkit query. Uh, please uh, uh, take a look what's going to happen here. 
So loading, you see that, right? Loading in the heroes page. In the villains, there's a loading, but it's very quick, right? Let's go back to heroes. Loading again. Now let's go back to villains. There's no loading anymore. Always seeing that loading in RTK, there's no loading. Why? Because of caching. So how do you do caching in the Redux? So we, which is very uh, uh, helpful. But before that, let's go to syncing uh, states in complicated nested components. So in managing complex uh, state for syncing or reflecting changes in states in different components, we have to consider two things or uh, divide your global states into two things. Client state data. What is client state data? And we have API data. So this is what we're trying to put in the global state. So we have to divide this. These two, client state data and API data, and then you'll see what, what are these in, in state management. In client state data, uh, a, a global client state data for, for, for example, for uh, user settings, team, right, etc., and uh, API data, which is our server requests or remote data, right, just to separate them. Um, so, in API data, we can improve it, improve the, the data coming from the server by applying caching, uh, optimistic update, and odd fetching, which you will see later. So as you can see here, user settings, team, dark team, light team. This is something we can put it in the, in the store, but this doesn't require HTTP requests, right? Settings and then light team, dark team. You don't, you don't send requests to the server and then get the result here. However, uh, array, our collection, or, or uh, remote data, uh, this is important to know because we can apply caching here. Because we don't need caching here. This is already in the, the browser. In, in remote data, data coming from a server, it's a good idea to apply caching. Why? Again, you see that le uh, earlier when I go to the VLANs page and the heroes page, Heroes page gives you this loading, right? A spinner. When I go back to villains page, there's no loading. That's a very good uh, user experience, by the way, for your user. To not let them see this you know, user. And one more thing, I don't have the, uh, an example here. If, you're, if you have a uh, like blog post or, or uh, a store, where you can go to the, the, the detail store. For example, Pokemon, you want to see uh, Pikachu. If you're caching that, you went to Pikachu, uh, Pikachu right? You go back to the, to the list of Pokemon, you went back to Pikachu, it's already cached. It will just give you it instantly without waiting for the response of the server. So that's the beauty of, of, uh, of caching it. And actually, you can do this to, uh, uh, using React Query, but you know, it's, it's already you know, something that you can, you can use from the Redux toolkit, so you don't have to install this, by the way. And this is really uh, something that's uh, very popular in, in React when caching data coming from the back end to give you this uh, um, good uh, user experience. So, uh, RTK query, what it, what it is, what problem it solves, what APIs are included in RTK query, basic RTK query usage. So, we have these queries. The most common use case of RTK query, query operation can be performed with any data fetching library of your choice. Uh, mutations, mutating data, updating data in the back end, right? And RTK has this cache behavior, right? So, which is, uh, I showed you earlier. So let's go back to that code. Or again, here. Heroes without cache, with cache. So how do you implement that? In Redux, which is already built in. Let's go here, RTK query. So, 
in RTK query, uh, so I removed the, the Redux here, by the way, just to give you these lesser files. You don't see the heroes anymore, just the vlanes. So in vlanes, just write query.ts. We have uh, an interface here of the vlane or the, the type model. Uh, create API. This is what you need. This is a reducer path for the vlane. Base query. So all of these are something that you can find also in documentation of RTK. You need this uh, fetch base query, which is already an HTTP client that will also cache your data. And what are these? In React query and here in RTK query, you need these tag types, these tags. What are these? This will ID the cache. So this is for 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 letting the, the RTK remember, hey, please cache this. So if you have a dozen of data that you're caching, of course, for, for the RTK to see which one are you uh, editing, you need to ID them. And this is like an ID. This uh, tags here. Just an ID, just to uh, give the RTK that this is it. Um, Okay, F uh, yeah, the HTTP client, HTTP client in RTK, we have this fetch vlanes, that's gonna be one uh, HTTP request. Builder, that query, your, your typings, return void, and you need this um, inside this curly brace, this uh, function, this query that returns Actually, this is the path, the path of the uh, HTTP. Uh, this is the endpoint, by the way, because you already set it up here. You have this base URL, right, which is a, has a proxy. So you just append this. It's just like, yeah, this is the same as this one, because we already have a base URL, right? So uh, add vlane. vlane. Uh, query, request, this is coming from the form, right? When you're uh, sending uh, data, put it in the body method. You have to uh, uh, tell the, the, the RTK, this is a post. Again, the URL is going to be something like this. Because you have the base URL, right? That's for the add vlane. Uh, remove vlane, method delete. And then this one. And what's good here is uh, maybe I can show it to you, which is already, oh, it's gone. Maybe I did something. Wait. Oops, not this, but. Uh, Then let's remove this. Ah, okay, yeah. Sorry, because I just refresh it. So here we go. Um, does it send? But anyway, yeah. Then sending requests. Mm -hmm. Two o one. Hmm. I think I touch something here. But anyway, even this one, this Redux toolkit, uh, Redux uh, dev tool, suddenly disappears. Yeah, I was just testing it. I I don't know why it's not appearing the dev tools. <laughs> it was like earlier this year. Uh, too bad we we cannot. I cannot show you the the replay why it's not appearing here. It's weird. 
although it's here redox. Uh, but I cannot see the UI of Redux Dev Tool. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Let's see. Redux. Okay, here you go. Okay, that's it. Now it's here. So if you're not familiar with the Redux, uh, this, this uh, dev tool, uh, basically you can see the action here. And you can see also some diffing. So first of all, what's happening? So we learned some, some uh, initialization uh, going here. Uh, next thing that happened, we have this hero fetch pending. Hero fetch heroes uh, fulfilled. Let's remove, let's remove. It's being recorded, right? It's being recorded, and then you can uh, replay it for debugging. This is for debugging, by the way. And then what you need, what's, uh, what's good here is in uh, a specific point of uh, in time, you can check the state if it really remove something. For example, how many heroes we have here, three. And here, remove hero from state, you can see that it's two. This is uh, very uh, good for, for debugging. And uh, this is uh, something that you will not have if you're not using uh, state management libraries. Uh, if you're just using the the built-in in in React, the I forgot that that name. The the what's that name again? The in in React, the built-in uh, for managing. Uh, they have this. Yeah, yeah. Use context. Thanks. <laughs> you wouldn't have this in 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 use context, by the way. So that's the difference between uh, use, what, what is use context, but because some developers say you already have state it's state management uh, library built in in React. No, that's not state management library. You don't have dev tools there. <laughs> you cannot replay what you're doing. Here for debugging purposes, you can definitely uh, do this. You have pending, right? Okay, pending, pending. We have pending. Because I already wait, refresh. Oh yeah, it's it's. Uh, I thought it's from zero, from empty array. You know why? Because of the. Because pending should be an empty array. Because what? In our features, in slice. It's an empty array, right? But in pending, there's already one, two, three, five, six. Where's it coming from? It's coming from local storage. Right. Let's um, going to remove the Wi-Fi. Refresh it, it's already there because I persisted it in the local storage. That's uh, that I talked about earlier, right? That that library. It's really uh, uh, good to use. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, I think that that's uh, all I've got here. What is Redux, what it can do, what is RTK, how to set it up with the uh, with the tests. And how to add also how to persist it in in local storage. If you want the repo of those, you know, set up with with TypeScript, with uh, with this, this is like everything already with TypeScript, with with JS test, with React testing library, with uh, persisting to local storage, uh, RTK query with side effects, without side effects. Everything is there. You can just go to this uh, repo 
on my GitHub, and then, yeah, just play around with it. If you want to uh, uh, apply this in your own application in the future, I still keep on updating this, by the way, because I've been reusing this for the past three years now. I ju just changed the, the, the number, but it will still be the same. It will be redirect, uh, redirect you to this repo one day. So yeah, this is what I use in, in every workshop of, of uh, Freedux React that I'm doing. And yeah, just, just download the repo or just book it more, or yeah, so you can use it one day in your project just to play around and see. Because every uh, thing that you can uh, use in, in Redux is already here, except that normalizer that I mentioned, because it's already advanced normalizing data, you know, if it's uh, uh, something that uh, screwed data with nested objects and and uh, array, and you want it to be uh, in a data structure that you want normalizer. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, I hope you've you've learned something here. This uh, Redux with with TypeScript and RTK query, the caching, right, giving you the the giving your user best ex uh, user experience because of the the cache that they wouldn't see the the loader anymore or spinner. So, and then with optimistic update also, by the way. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Devlin, for this very in-depth insight into the Redux toolkit. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so, we running a bit late, so we'll go through the questions very fast. So, I have a quick question about... Yeah, I have some questions as well, <laughs> but let's let's first check maybe if there are any questions from the audience or from... Okay, there are no questions, yeah, I saw so that it's empty. then yeah, please start. About the Redux toolkit and using it in a project, um, what do you do when you... Can you ever update the whole toolkit or is that even not practical or is it super easy to update the whole toolkit because it's a, a combination of different uh, packages and technologies can you just uh, is there an easy upgrade path for example why I noticed is react router part of the toolkit for example uh, no 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 it's not uh, the react router is not part of the toolkit but it's also in the the repo by the way the the, the, the la I'm using the latest uh, react router there the react router 6 and there's a uh, uh, two different way I set up the routing uh, with lazy loaded or uh, code splitting. The other, that's uh, what I called um, lazy loading component, uh, lazy routes. The other one is the, the normal uh, routing, which is uh, eager routing, right? That's why you'll see two different routing in my uh, mm -hmm. sample repo because I separated the, the code splitting, the lazy loading uh, router, and uh, the other one with the which is the, the declarative, but it's an you know eager way of b basically it pulls everything already the the resources, uh, but the code splitting will just give you all the files uh, on demand, the resource on demand as you navigate to different pages, right? But it's uh, again it's it's not part of the RTK, but mm -hmm. you can use it. Uh, you can get it from my sample repo. Okay, question. yeah, so I want to ask one question. I had two, but um, I guess one of yeah. them is pretty it's pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my question is you showed us uh, how to cache Pikachu, which is very nice. Um, and I guess many of you Neos and Fusion users uh, are familiar with the invalidation of cache by tags. Mm -hmm. So my question would be, as far as I understood, uh, you invalidate your own tags, but that works only for the same client, right? Um, or does the server response also can invalidate tags on your local state? Like when two users are adding millions at the same time, by, for example. When two users are editing the same files at the same time. E, I think that's a, a good approach there is to, to uh, explicitly uh, invalidate right, uh, the data. So when, uh, when they did an action, and when you do an action, we will see the latest changes based on the the uh, API from the oh. se uh, the data from the server or from the web API. However, if you do caching, uh, you wouldn't see that loading again, that yeah. that pesky spinner loading. It will just do uh, an optimistic update, so it yeah. still gives your user a okay. very good uh, user experience. Okay, so as we all know, caches are evil <laughs> and hard to invalidate. Yeah, but yeah. thanks for the answer. Yeah. 
And you got some more yeah, questions. Yeah, one last quick question. Uh, you already mentioned the use context uh, hook from React, and you also said that it's not really a state management system like Redux yeah. is. And I, I really like the new leaner Redux with less boilerplate code. Mm -hmm. But would you also recommend using Redux for, let's say, rather super smallish projects? Is there a certain scaling going on? Would you or would you recommend Redux for every project you <laughs> you make? Uh, this is uh, a very good question and, and uh, debatable. Yeah, to okay. use Maybe not that Redux, fast question. Yeah. <laughs> um, just in my opinion, since uh, Redux is the, the number one state management library and most companies are looking for React developers with experience in Redux. Uh, yeah, I guess it's because the, 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 the problem the, the complaint of developers is this boilerplate when setting up Redux, mm -hmm. right? But you know why, what? Um, just setting up the, the, the store, it, it takes a few lines of codes, right? But once you set it up, it's, it's there and you don't have to update it again and again. And it's, it's, uh, an, it's actually it's an investment also. Uh, Investment also for, for other onboarding developers because uh, probably they already know Redux. And yeah, just in to, to answer that question, yeah, I would recommend using Redux from, from the start, even, even your application is small because the it, it application tends to, to go large, uh, right? So, but, but if you already set it up there in the beginning, even if it's small, when you see that it's growing, there's a little change that you have to 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 add in the existing, you know, repo because you already set it up. You have the store, and you have this already pattern uh, of your reducer. You have these features and slices. You already have this pattern. All you need to do is create a new file, vlanes.tsx something like that, slice, and then there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and we also have a little present for you. Oh, thank you, Th thank that, you. That's Chin. Sponsored oh, by uh, Tech Division. So I'm not so much into alcohol, so I don't know about this gin. But if you want to know, please ask the guys <laughs> from Tech Division because I yeah. guess they know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank and you, Neo. Big round of applause for, for Stefan again. Ah, uh, for <laughs> Devlin, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks for the gin also. <laughs> thanks, guys, and uh, yeah, don't don't hesitate to to ask me questions later uh, when we're, you know, having lunch or something. I'll be there to answer it.